This book reminds me of like an old Magic the Gathering card. Look how worn these edges are. I mean, just super, super worn all throughout the book. Just so much use. So whoever owned this book before me, and actually there's a name in the book, but I'm not gonna mention the name because they might still be alive, must have used this book a lot. The book is filled with writing. Almost the entire book has writing in it, even the later chapters. So you can tell that someone spent a great deal of time learning math. I can smell the book as I flip through the pages. I'm just gonna give it a whiff. Oh, just what a well-worn warrior of a book. Just to give you another look there at the book. Yeah, really cool. So in this video, we're not really gonna go through the entire book. Instead, I'm just gonna show you like briefly what this book covers. And then I found a problem and we're gonna work through it. As the name implies, it covers algebra and trigonometry and was written by Cameron. This is the revised edition. I'm guessing this is the second edition. So 1960, 1965. So very old book. Yeah, January, 1965. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So these are the contents and it covers pretty much everything you would expect to see in a course on algebra or trig. So if you took a course like pre-calculus in college, you could use this book to supplement what you're taking in your class. If you took a course like trig, you could also use this book to supplement what you're learning in class. You could also use this book for self-study it reads fairly well, and I really like the size of this book. It's just a really good size. It's not really, really big, and it has answers to the odd-numbered exercises. But look at the size, right? It's not that thick, and it covers a ton of math. It's just really concise. And again, with answers to all of the odd-numbered questions, I'm really happy with this book. Here's one of the sections on trig. You can see all of the writing in this book. Just completely ridiculous. Whoever owned this book before me must have used it extensively to study, and this is far into the book. We're like halfway through the book here, right? It feels like halfway in terms of thickness. Yeah, or over halfway. And they're still writing in the book. And look, they're still working through it. So a lot of times in these older books, you'll see like writing at the beginning of the book because people always start really motivated and then like they lose motivation as the course goes on. So that's just normal human behavior. But this person was a beast, right? They just kept working through it. Here are the answers to the odd numbered questions. So you can see it does actually have answers which make it a great book for self-study. I have no idea how hard this book is to get. I really don't know. So if I find it on the internet, I'll leave a link in the description, but let's go ahead and jump into it and do some actual math. So this is the problem that we're going to do. And it's not like a really difficult problem, but it's also not a really standard problem. A lot of people haven't seen problems like this, so I thought it might be fun to work through it. The question is to find k so that the equation has equal roots. And this is a quadratic equation in x. So we have k squared x squared plus kx plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So first recall that if you have an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a is not equal to zero. This is called a quadratic equation, and it has solutions given by a super powerful formula known as the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So we want this equation to have equal roots. So basically that's going to happen when this is gone right? So we'll have negative b over 2a, and it'll be what's called a repeated real root. So basically we need this piece to be zero. Well, this square root will be zero whenever what's inside the square root will be zero. In fact, the piece inside the square root has a name. I'm going to call it a little, little d. Little d is called the discriminant. And it's given by the piece inside the square root. So it's b squared minus 4ac. So people learn in math books in college and high school that depending on the value of the discriminant, that will determine the types of solutions. So like if the discriminant is positive, you're gonna get um, like the square root of a positive number. So you'll get distinct real roots. If the discriminant is negative, right, the piece under the square root is negative, you're gonna get an i, right? Like if you, like maybe square root negative five, et cetera, square root negative seven. So that's gonna give you an i. 
So you're going to get complex conjugates, complex conjugates, just extra, extra life knowledge. And then if the discriminant is zero, that's when we're going to get that repeated root. So in this case, we're going to get a repeated root. The problem just says equal roots, but same thing. All right, so we just have to figure this out. We have to make this equal to zero. So in our particular problem, A is K squared. B, we have to find B. So to find B, you'll notice that we have KX plus two X. So we have to rewrite this. What you can do is you can pull out the X. So this is really, this becomes K plus two times X. So your B is K plus two. And then your C is equal to one. All right, now we just plug it in here and set it equal to zero. So D is equal to, well, it's B squared. So K plus two squared minus four, and then that's K squared. And then C is one, so I guess I'll write it. And we want it to be zero because we want a repeated root. All right, let's keep going. So to multiply this out, there's a shortcut. You square the first one. You multiply these and double them. So two times K is two K, double it and you get four K. And then you square the last one, so four. And then minus four K squared equals zero. Good stuff. So D is equal to, let's see, K squared minus four K squared is minus three K squared. And it looks like we have a four K and a four. So plus four K plus four, and we want that to be equal to zero. So we have this equal to zero. I don't like the negative there because it's gonna make it harder for me to think about factoring. So really we have this. So what you can do is just multiply three by negative one and then just change the sign on all of these. So three K squared minus four K minus four equals zero. Now I suppose you could use the quadratic equation to solve this for K, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna try to factor. And let's just try to guess. I mean, there's only so many numbers that multiply to four, like nice numbers, right? Like two times two is four, one times four is four. So, Let's try two and two, and let's make this one negative and this one positive. And I believe that works, let's check. 3K times K is 3K squared, check. The inner piece is 2K, the outer piece is negative 6K. When you add them up, you get the middle term, which is negative 4K, check. And two times negative two is negative four. We have a product equal to zero, so we set each factor equal to zero. So 3K plus two, equals zero, or k minus two is zero. Subtract two, divide by three, so we get k equals negative two thirds. And the other one here is k equals two. So those are our two answers for this problem. So not really a difficult problem, but still kind of interesting to do. So that those are the values uh, of k such that this quadratic equation has equal roots. So if I was, if I were to plug in k equals two into this equation, I would get a quadratic equation with equal roots. Same thing with negative two thirds. You know what? You know what? We should try it. Let's just try two because I don't really want to deal with the fraction. <laughs> so let's just try that one. I'm going to write it again. K squared x squared plus kx plus two x plus one equals zero. And we had two values of k in this problem that should lead to equal roots k equals two and k equals negative two thirds. So let's go ahead and plug in two and see what happens. Plugging in two, we're gonna get two squared, so that's four. Plugging in two, we get two x plus two x plus one equals zero. So this is gonna be four x squared plus four x plus one equals zero. Yeah, this is called a perfect square trinomial because I believe this is two X plus one squared equals zero. Beautiful. So that's gonna give us equal roots. If you solve this, you basically get this, and that gives you this. Boom, subtracting one, dividing by two, and you end up with that. So yes, this plugging into gives you this equation, which simplifies to this, which factors this way, which gives you that, which gives you that as the answer. Pretty cool. And something similar should happen with negative two thirds um, but yeah, 
So kind of interesting, kind of an interesting problem. So that's it. Hopefully you learned something new and I think this book is pretty cool. I really like the size. I like that it's like not super big and you can learn a lot from this book. I mean, this book contains tons of information and if you compare this to modern books, it's a lot smaller. I guess because it doesn't really have like as many illustrations and stuff like that. Um, but that, I mean, it does have a lot of exercises. I mean, look at all of these exercises here. So quite a bit in terms of problems and you have solutions to the odd ones. Yeah. I hope this video has been helpful and hopefully you've learned something. Good luck.